because when, it, when we rebound the ball, we have more stops, we can run, we can play faster. I need to be a little bit more aggressive because that that's going to open up even more even more um, shots for my teammates. Congratulations, Nicola, on your first one of the season. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I have no idea what that was. I have no idea what the facial hair is, but apparently if you have 18 assists, you can do whatever you want. With that, we kick off an early season edition of Jump Ball. First off, who is more likely to average a triple-double this season, Russell Westbrook or Nikola Jokic? Westbrook has two triple-doubles in two games this season. Jokic has two in three games, including, yes, that monster 18 assist triple-double last night. So, Vince, who you got here? Can't pit Luca, so I'm gonna go with Russ. I mean, he, Russ has already proven. <laughs> Russ has already proven to us that he can average a triple double. We know he can. He, we know he can do it. He, we know he wants to go out and show new life yes. and do for his team. So I, I, I'm gonna pick Russ on this one. Yeah, the safe and boring answer is Russ. He's done it before. Jokic has never averaged more than seven and a half assists in any season, so he's got a long hill to climb to sort of get to the 10 mark, but man, it would be so fun if Nikola Jokic chased a triple-double. The guy is the Absolutely. most watchable player in the NBA. The passes he's, he throws 10 passes a night that just have me laughing in front of my <laughs> screen. They're so ridiculous and fun. But Russ has right. done it, and Russ is a safer bet to do it again. I, I do feel like the two words I said watching that Nuggets game the most last night, come on, come on. I mean, he just, he does yeah. stuff that makes you say. Come on. It's insane watching him. So much fun. All right, guys, the NBA. And I'll say, I play with Jay Kidd. Oh, yes. I play with Jay Kidd. <laughs> and watching Jay Kidd pass, I mean, and just he, the way he puts the ball down there, it's just kudos to him. Yeah, absolutely. All right, the NBA has named its players of the week. DeMontis Sabonis and Brandon Ingram, both career highs of about seven assists per game in the early going. So, Zach, who is making the bigger playmaking leap, Sabonis or Ingram? I think both the guys have been phenomenal. But I think for playmaking, it's Ingram. Sabonis has always been a really good playmaking center. I just think he has the ball a little bit more. Guys have made more shots than in previous years. He's throwing basically the same passes he's always thrown, and he's incredible at it. And he's just killing people in the post, by the way. It's fun to watch. But Ingram is throwing more sophisticated passes in a more ball-dominant role. He's making both the easier passes right away to keep the offense moving and some of the harder, more sophisticated passes. His playmaking leap is super meaningful, and I think the hardest playmaking leap to make is sort of a lead ball handler from good to great. And I think he's showing he might be making that good to great leap as a playmaker, and if he is, that changes everything for the Pelicans. Yeah, I, I, I pick Ingram as well, and I think it's just the progression. In the first couple of years in the NBA, you want to prove that you belong, and he's a scorer, so you want to prove that you can score with the best, uh, uh, the best of the best. He made the All-Star game, so now he has a little swagger. He got a big payday, so swagger's there, so he's taking it to the next level. Scoring's going to be there now. Now he's showing the next step and the next piece to his puzzle to becoming a complete player, and that's his playmaking ability. So, uh, yeah, we knew it, he was on the cusp of, of, of being a, su a superstar. So payday, you know, swagger, put those <laughs> together. This is what you're getting. Excellent. All right, let's talk rookies last of all. Anthony Edwards, James Weissman were top, the top two picks, and as of right now, they're the top two leading scorers among rookies, too. So, Vince, who has had the more impressive rookie start, Weissman or Edwards? I mean, I have to go with Edwards, Edwards the number one pick. Uh, first of all, I, you know, I read a, a tweet from Baron Davis, like, how many number one picks do you know that are not starting in NBA history? This guy is playing uh, off the charts. He's super athletic. Uh, he, 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 he's playing like he belongs, and he's playing like he's a number one pick. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick Edwards. But it's so easy to pick Wiseman as well, uh, playing with along Steph Curry, who demands attention, who can, the Warriors will utilize his athletic ability, but Edwards right now is playing lights out. I'm going to go Wiseman. Again, like Vince said, both guys have been playing great. Both guys are ahead of maybe where we expect. But I'll go Wiseman only because, first of all, the five of six from three, I, I, he's not going to shoot that much longer, but it's super impressive that he's already comfortable shooting that. Defensively, I think he has more to do 
Then Edwards is the backline guy for the Warriors, and he's ahead of the curve for most rookie big men. He gets in a nice stance. He knows where to be. And on offense, he's got to make a lot of quick-hitting reads and stuff in Golden State's offense. So I'll go with Wiseman by a hair, but both those guys are, I think, even exceeding early season expectations. Fun to see the new blood in the league. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.